guys, I want to welcome you to a very important video I am making today where I'm going to get into some of the background of our esteemed and trusty leader of the pickup community, the CEO of Real Social Dynamics, oh, Tyler Durden, otherwise known as Owen Cook. I just closed girl number 758. I was going to shower because my hair got a little fucked up. Decided not to. Also experimenting with like a B-roll camera by propping my webcam up on some time release vitamin C tablets. <laughs> Which I'll make a separate video about how you can actually prevent heart disease completely. No joke. Using these tablets. Okay, so to get into this, a little bit of background. Um, I broke 100 lay count in 2012 utilizing just mystery method. I didn't know what RSD was. I didn't know RSD concepts. I had read Mystery's book, which was called The Mystery Method. Um, I, I think there's lots of really good stuff from that book, and I think a lot of it is also not really good like I, I feel like the big fault with mystery for those of you that don't know I'm talking about Eric von Markovic um, he was in the book the game he was like the one that was always melting down with style um, this was like my hero like style was my hero mystery was my hero the other characters from the game like Papa and, and Tyler Durden were my hero but I'll go into this video in a second why you know they're far from from that in real life. Um, basically, uh, shit, I don't even know what the fuck my point was about to be here. Um, oh yeah, so I broke a hundred lay count with just mystery method, okay? And I literally didn't know anything about RSD or anything, but somehow I ended up on their mailing list. I think I got hit by their marketing somehow. And I got an email that was like, Tyler Durden is coming to Philadelphia. This is where I was living in 2012. And I had just broken 100 lay count, right? And again, I knew nothing about RFC at this point. I had broken this milestone in 2012. Mind you, most of you motherfuckers in the community, most of you motherfuckers watching this, still haven't broken 100. This was five years ago, right? So it's pretty pathetic the state of the community the state of the skill level of most of these guys like it's it's considered some big giant achievement um in the early part of 2017 i'm recording this in december of 2017 in the early part of this year i was able to knock down another 100 go from 600 to 700 um i think in like five months less than five months and i I passed up on a bunch of shit too because I had rotations and blah blah blah. Like it's not that fucking hard to like bang a lot of hot chicks, right? Like it's really not. Especially when you know um, what the fuck you're doing. But that's not the purpose of this video. Purpose of this video is so okay, so I get this email, I'm living in Philadelphia, I get this email that says Tyler Durden from the book The Game is coming to Philadelphia. And in my mind I'm like, oh shit, like because as most of you watching this that are in the community or even that have read the book The Game, most of you probably see him as like some superstar, right? Like some, it's like a fucking, it's like LeBron James, this, this is how he's portrayed. It's like LeBron James in basketball. It's like um, <laughs> Babe Ruth <laughs> in baseball, okay? Far from the truth. I'll go into all the reasons why. Um, but I'm going to keep this video short also. This is going to be like some big um, giant assault on his character. Even though it's well, 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 well deserved and warranted. And, and he's fucked up so much shit amongst many men's lives and in the community. Even though he, you know, runs this facade. That he's like their savior and all this stuff. Okay, I'm gonna explain to you why RSC is basically a cult. 
why Tyler Durden is mostly full of shit, why Papa's a fucking loser, and why Tyler's a loser as well. Anyways, okay, back to the point. I get this email. I was a philosophy major. I'm a very analytical guy. For those of you that have seen other videos of mine, I study things very um, matter-of-factly, very analytically, with lots of critical thinking. Okay. So I see Tyler Durden, who had been referenced as a philosophy major from Canada, who was like trying to like pick all the information from these guys' brains in the book The Game and all this stuff, and like who knows if Neil Strauss actually portrayed him as, you know, someone he's not or whatever. But I'm gonna show you factually why I think Neil was probably running the money and probably was underscoring how fucked up um, and conniving and out of control Tyler Durden, a.k.a. Owen Cook is. Okay, and I'm also going to put out here, as I just thought of this, and I don't really care, just as I said in my arrest response video, I'm just going to put shit out there, like, you guys can come after me, you can try to fucking kill me. I have a feeling you won't, because I'm making this shit very public, and I also have a lot of protections in place against my own personal safety. And it's also going to be very clear, if any of you try to fuck with me again, who did it. So I'm pr I feel pretty comfortable saying what I'm about to say here. Okay, Owen Cook, a.k.a. Tyler Durden from the book The Game, is here in the United States. Well, I'm not in the United States right now. But he is living in the United States illegally. Let me repeat. Illegally. Okay. He could and should be deported. This is why he doesn't leave the U.S. to teach international programs. That's why he hides in his Hollywood Hills mansion with one of his roommates is a um, very successful and high profile marijuana dealer, legal marijuana, I should note. He's not dealing illegal drugs. And Tyler kind of like piggybacks on this guy's parties and all this shit and like posts videos of like these parties at the mansion and all this shit and like acts like he's super cool on Instagram and like whatever I've been like following Tyler very closely okay and I'm not a fucking idiot and I'm also very close friends with the top guys in the game Tyler is not even close to a top guy in the game and he's been on like this giant poser uh, rampage mostly centered on his appearance um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to bring you into his psyche a little bit this is a guy who has very low self-esteem, who has very real, actual, shitty results in the game. Okay, not. And again, this isn't coming from a competitor standpoint. This isn't coming from a let's take him down as a marketing angle. No, I don't care. I, I run a successful non-pickup company. I have plenty of money. I don't give a shit. I give a shit about a man purposely directing a cult and misleading people on a massive scale. That's what I care about, okay? So we have a man, very low self-esteem, almost 40 years old, balding, okay? His latest shit over the past six months or a year or whatever, I don't follow him like super close on Instagram or his fucking stupid videos. But what I've realized is you know, he's a big fan of scarves nowadays. Take a look at his fucking stupid Instagram or his fucking stupid YouTube channel. We have all these scarves now. Okay, we have leather coats. We have two two tone leather coats with fucking patterns. And yeah, Tyler, you're gonna watch this and be like, ho ho ho, what? A... Like he can't even realize that he how big of a loser he is. I've seen this guy in field tons of times. I've spoken to countless people who have seen him in field tons of times. Here's how the girls respond. That guy is creepy as fuck. That guy is weird as fuck. That guy seems like he might be gay. I've showed countless hot women, like girls are above a nine, countless. Like, probably over 50. Multiple pictures of him. Not even just, like, his worst pictures. And they all rate him, like, I'm not even kidding you, like, three to four out of ten or lower. Girls say this is a face only a mother could love. Um... 
yeah, like he, you're like you're watching this. I'm sure people are gonna sense you. You're ugly. You're fucking washed up. Like you never were anyone in the first place. The whole image you've built in the community is all a facade. Okay, you're fucking being disgraceful and putting out fake infield, and that's proven. There's students fucking having you on camera admitting it. I'm going to release all this shit. I don't give a fuck. You're putting out fucking fake infield with hired actresses and shit like that. And Todd Valentine, who is now defected, has also done the same shit. So fuck you too, Todd. I respect you in some degree for passively aggressively calling out these fucking idiot losers. But you were part of this shit too. You and I and I've gained with you and field as well and your weak as shit at closing. This video is not about Todd. <clears throat> okay. Owen Cook, Tyler Durden, has built a giant facade. Like there's literally guys in the community that think this guy is at five thousand lay count. Okay. Now his friends with RST Derek, he told me yeah, Owen's only at like fifty lay count. I was friends with Manhor, I was roommates with Manhor. Manhor was like, yeah, this guy's only a 50 day count. There's a thread on sluthate.com. If you Google the keywords, ask an RSD intern anything. Actually, I'm gonna look it up right now. I'm not gonna fucking put it into the video here. I'm just gonna read some of the quotes. And this was not me that wrote this, of course not. I was, I worked for them in 2012. I taught boot camps. Okay. This is an intern that worked with them closely, and I can post this link in the fucking description. I'm here to expose these fuckers. I'm not going to make this super long, but, the, but here is a rundown of the shit I uncovered during my time with these scammers. They fake roughly about 50 to 70% of their hot seat footage. Okay, I've never once faked an infield footage. You know why? Because when you have top fucking skills and you're a top expert at this shit, you never need to fake this stuff. I will be honest, I considered it briefly at one point with a couple hot fuck buddies that I had, and I was like, wow, this could be very nice, you know, publicity. I got a couple hot fuck buddies, I'll take them home on camera. And I said, why the, you know, why would the fuck, like, because I hold this stuff in high regard, and I didn't want to fucking taint any of this pure footage that I have. So I didn't do it. So they said they, they fake 50 to 70% of their hot, hot seat footage. And I mean all the instructors, including Todd with his latest hot seat footage. Again, there's other evidence with Julian fucking instructing models to pretend that they're being pulled and all this shit. Disgraceful. Dis fucking disgraceful. I won't even go in in this video into all the shit about how you guys are trying to put out 30 products to fix guys' issues with game, which is total bullshit. Your whole business model is centered around actually not fixing it and actually misleading them and confusing them and teaching them superfluous information and contradictory information. And I've said in other videos, I can teach all of Night Game in under two hours and guys can pull on night one of my program and then pull for the rest of their life, not every fucking night, but with high probability. Tyler and Papa, ha oh wait, hold on, so okay. They fake 50 to 70% of their hot seat footage and I meet all the instructors, including Todd, okay? Todd Truth, okay? I'd like to hear Todd Truth on his fucking bullshit truth uh, journey or like uh, awakening, Todd Truth. Why are you fucking? Inf why are you faking infield? Okay. And also, I'm just. This video is not about Todd, but I will. I will say this during that 2012 boot camp. I said to Todd, "What is your lay count?" He said, "It's all. It's around 90." Someone asked him. During the free tour, for those of you who don't know, that's their little bullshit free talk where they try to rope you into their hot seat and rope you into their boot camps. And he said, I don't, I don't know, I lost track, but it's between 150 and 300. And he had just told me like 15 minutes before it was a 90. I was like, holy fuck. Like, I could go on and on. Like, I don't want this to be some fucking long video. For those of you that follow me, I have more infield than anyone else. I have over 100 infield footage pulls from bars and clubs on camera. I take this shit in very high regard, very seriously, not in a fucking weird way or like, oh, like, you know, I'm like a fucking psycho because I track all this stuff. 
No, it's just it's it's like an honorable thing. Like if you were a top salesman in a company, would it make sense to just lie about the sales you're closing? No. If people found out you were lying about the sales you're closing, and you were telling people other statistics about your closes versus what you're reporting publicly, should that be looked upon with shame? A fucking course, so yes, yes, it should. Here you have these people looking up to you. I don't care that your company is the best company. There, there's a bunch of digital products that wipe the floor with you guys profit-wise. Tower Badass, Pandora's Box, Stealth Seduction, you know, also a bunch of scam bullshit, even admitted to me personally by these guys, and I have the text threads of that. Those guys made millions off the pickup niche. Okay, and I'm not like the big savior here to, to save the day and all this stuff. But this shit fucking pisses me off. It's like, if you're a solid pickup artist, if you can pull girls consistently on camera, then fucking do it. Like, if you, if you can do epic stuff, do it. And brag about it, and report about it, and have a following, because you can actually do it. Like, I know Todd and Tyler and all you fucking idiots are going to see this video. Todd Truth. Like, he's he's trying to take the high road now, but not get sued. So he's like, oh, all this content over the years was, was misrepresented to you. And people lied about it and all this stuff. And here I am to expose the truth, but none of these guys are at fault. And um, actually, they're not bad people for propagating this information. Okay. Again, I don't even know how I'm in this situation. It's sad. I, I'm, I'm, I've digressed like immensely, but you guys can feel the passion and feel the annoyance from all this shit when you have a bunch of clowns. When I read the book, The Game, I thought, literally, this is like the LeBron James, this is the Kobe Bryant, this is the, the Babe Ruth, fucking Tom Brady. Or maybe those, you know, when I read the book, maybe those guys weren't even popular at, the, at that time. But you understand my point. I was, I was starstruck. I was in awe when I found out Tyler Durden was coming to Philadelphia. I actually was broke at this point. This is not a, this is not one of, one of those little hero stories from marketing videos. I really was broke, and I put the entire boot camp, which cost two thousand dollars, on credit card. And I was like, okay, time to take shit to the next level. Like, I just hit 100. Here we have uh, analytical, flossy major guy that I, that I admired from the book The Game, who I think is a superstar. And keep in mind, I, I cracked 100 without even meeting, like, I don't even think I met any, any other pickup artist prior to this point, prior to taking this RST program. And a lot of you might be like, oh, well, how do, you know, who were your wingman? What was your support? You know, I just found, like, some cool dudes to wing with and stuff, or some other guys that are interested in learning the game and that kind of shit, right? But I assumed, when I read the book The Game, when I read Mystery Method, and keep, and keep in mind, I listened to Mystery Method about 50 times, and that might, again, that might sound fucking sociopathic or crazy or whatever. It was very refreshing to me, having come, having, like, grown up with an introverted background as a very analytical and smart guy. But there were these guys that had turned social interaction into like a chess match, like mystery. And for those of you that are wondering, mystery like topped off around like low 300 count, late counters and everything, blah, blah, blah. I can make, I'm going to make a whole other video about that. But it's one of the only objective metrics of skill, given your age, your time in the game, which cities you've gamed in, how often you go out, and your average quality of the girls you fuck. Okay, it's one of the only objective metrics. The same thing as salesmen tracking the amount of sales they close. And a lot of guys are like, oh, well, you know, you're just crazy because you keep track of your closes, or like, you know, that must mean all the girls you fuck are, are low quality or whatever. No. 
and I'll make a separate video. It's not the end all be all, but it's a reliable metric for tracking someone's skills. For instance, just as an anecdotal reference, today in my forum, we had a guy spouting off that his game is tight as fuck, that he's really, really good, all this shit, but that most, almost every girl he meets, coincidentally, happens to have a boyfriend. And I'm like, dude, it doesn't happen to me. It doesn't happen to most other top guys I know. I think maybe it's your game. And he's like, no, my game's really, really strong. It's tight as fuck. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how many chicks have you been with? And he's like, eight. And he's 25. Okay, so I just fucked five in the past five days. And I have another one coming in five hours. I actually had an intermediate one set up and we had to reschedule. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably fuck eight girls in this week. Okay, and that's his lifetime count, and his game's tight as fuck, and we're all like, no man, like, the problem's your game. Like, and he's not even getting dates from most of his approaches. Like, he's opening 100 girls, he's getting, like, two dates. I'm closing, and I'll be honest about this, it doesn't seem like that high to most of you guys, but this is the reality of expert-level game. I'm closing right around 10% of the girls that I talk to. Seems really low, but it's actually not. Like, and, and in my phone, and I, I, as I stated earlier, I, I just closed girl number 758. And I don't count, like, there's been plenty of times I pull a girl home, I, I bring a girl home from a date or from a club, and she gives me a blowjob, she gives me a hand job, we make out, all this shit, all these amazing experiences where we didn't fuck. And I don't count that. It's like the equivalent of like not even going out. So there's probably like another thousand or, or 500 plus, I don't even know, I don't track that, of these amazing experiences. And in, and in my contact list, I have like close to 8,000 contacts. So that's how I know it's like close to 10%. And I've talked to other top guys, and it's 10%. That's, if you want to make a, a goal for a close rate, it should be around 10%. Same, I did, I did, um, sales this past summer and same shit most of the girls are going to reject you most of the girls are going to flake most of the customers in sales are going to not buy that doesn't mean you're a bad salesman that doesn't mean you're a bad pick up artist that's the natural state of things so I'm going to make another video about emotional resilience how you have to just be able to fucking literally take this shit like take the fuck you take the they disappeared when they're supposed to meet you. Take the, um, I don't think we're looking for the same thing. Like all, like all the forms of this shit, right? And you, and you start to develop like a really tough shell. It doesn't make you inhuman. But this is this is the game. Like if you can't handle it, don't fucking play it, right? Most of these, most almost everyone in the entire game fucking blows. Um, fact. Like, guys that I think are really good at this, less than ten of them. And there's four billion men in the world. Okay, I'm not, I'm not tooting all. You know, I'm not saying there's not guys that are crushing it outside of the community. There's plenty of naturals, there's plenty of celebrities, plenty of athletes. But in terms of guys that are like doing this strategically as like a pickup and seduction effort and pursuit, almost everyone is terrible. Okay, so back to the topic at hand. Lying about fucking results, okay? So I, I see this fucking boot camp offer with Tyler Durden and Todd Valentine, the RST Todd, actually happened to be the co-instructor for this program. Six person program, Philadelphia, June 2012. I'm at 103 lay count. Okay, as I said before, almost none of you are even fucking anywhere near 100. This was five years ago. Like, what are you guys doing? You're watching bullshit RST videos You're going out a thousand times, doing a thousand approaches, reinforcing the wrong strategies. And this isn't a competitor thing. Like, like I honestly don't even give a fuck about any of the money I'm making for pickup. I'm I'm making like so much from affiliate marketing, like several thousand a day, and that has nothing to do with pickup. Like, 
I'm not trying to like slide in low blows to like gain a market advantage and and uh, steal customers from RFC and all this shit. And a lot of you will be like, well, why does Tyler have so much more followers than you on his Instagram or his YouTube and shit? This is about who has like the fucking balls and the fucking skills and who doesn't. Tyler Durden does not, like definitively. Manhor told me, Tyler's at 50 lay count. One of RST's best kept secrets. RST Derek told me this, same shit. Michael Sartain, same shit. And I saw him in field, he got destroyed. I saw him in field a lot, always got destroyed. And the girls always were saying shit like, I, like I literally like was fascinated by this because I was like, what is happening? It's like if you went to see Babe Ruth live and he just struck out the whole time or you, or you went to see Kobe Bryant or LeBron James and they were just like missing passes and like all, like all this disastrous shit. Of course that wouldn't happen because those guys are actually legends and they actually have skill. But here we have a situation where we have basically, and I'm not going to beat around the bush about this, we have a cult leader here. And I, I can provide countless examples of this. Who has this chode minion following and, and, and I'm, I already know you got, there's a whole bunch of you that are going to dislike this video that are going to white knight the shit out of it. You know, Tyler... Tyler's fucked 5,000 girl. Why are three of his closest friends saying he's a 50 lay count? Here, let me go back to the article here with an XRSD intern. <laughs> Tyler and Pop, okay, so they fake roughly 50 to 70% of their, 50 to 70% of their hot seat footage. And I mean all the instructors, including Todd, right? Todd Truth. Fuck Todd Truth. You faked in field. Fuck you. You fucking, can't call these guys out because you're a fag. You're you're a pussy. I don't mind talking about this shit. Like I don't even know anyone else in the community. First of all, it's anywhere close to my level. That sounds super arrogant. I don't care. It's true. Show me how many people have over 100 infield pulls on camera. Frank Harrow today. <laughs> Pick up decoded Frank night game. Oh, you, you fucked 750 girls and you only have 100 of them on camera? How many do you have on camera, Frank? Why are you making videos saying you pick up dudes? Why are you making videos saying you pick up fat black chicks? Why do you look like a total loser in all your videos and why does your voice sound queer? I'm not even going to go down that road. Tyler and Papa have a lot of LA connections via club promoters, acquaintances, and various modeling and acting agencies. A lot of time they don't even have to pay these girls very much, if anything at all. Believe it and plant these girls during boot camps. And there's tons of examples of this. Totally despicable. This should never ever have even happened once. It's happened a whole bunch of times. And what's a guy going to get from a non-authentic staged infield footage video? Is, is that how we should be learning in this community? Having some fucking guy that's about to turn 40 years old that's balding, and, I, and back to his little fashion statement he's been making <laughs> in the past six months, and it, this is fucking hilarious to me, and especially with a lot of the other top guys. He's wearing fuck. Okay, this is his, his his typical wardrobe now. The orange leather jackets, the two tone fucking bullshit, orange with like, it's got like sleeves that are different color, right? The black leather jackets, even even like leather jackets upon leather jackets. Totally fucking gay. His scarves, right? He, he has scarves in almost every video now. Gay. Uh, what else? His designer sunglasses, right? And now he, he's, he wears a bunch of like hip hats to like cover up the receding. It's not even a receding hairline. Like he's, he's like almost halfway bald. And this isn't, this isn't like an attack on a man, right? This, these are just objective facts. When I show like over 50 girls, Here's a whole collection of photos of this man. This is supposed to be like the leading alpha player in our fucking community, right? And a lot of you might be like, oh, well, you're not a shining example of the leading alpha player or whatever. Like some of you know, I had an arrest almost five years ago. I made a, a video vindicating myself about that. Feel free to watch it. Um, 
I'm also going to be working with Sonny Arvado next year and getting very jacked. Not like, oh, you know, not like a bodybuilder, but I'm going to be in terrific shape. I know martial arts really well. I'm making fuckloads of money in business. I think I'm a much better role model despite all the all the bad press and all this bullshit that, that comes at me. Okay. What else about Tyler? Oh, the rip. We got the ripped jeans. We got the fucking open flannel shirts. And look at any of his videos. This this is his this is his attire now. And all the videos are like, "What up, Tyler?" Blah blah blah. Like, you want to know how to fucking dominate your social circle and all this shit? He has a fucking legal weed dealer that has a lot of connections in Hollywood Hills. So people come to his roommate's house to party and, I, and, I, and I've seen videos from the, from this shit and I've talked to people who've gone to these parties and it's a lot of dudes, a lot of this fucking sausage. And he's not fucking these girls. It's all a fucking show. This is all a fu the whole thing has been a facade. This, a lot of you have probably seen Fight Club, okay? Brad Pitt's character is actually like a true alpha derivative of, um, the fuck's his name? Edward uh, Norton. It's a true alpha derivative. Like, here we have uh, Edward Norton. He's like unsure of himself, like kind of like all over the place and all this shit. Brad Pitt's character comes in. He wants to fight everyone, all this shit. He wants to fucking build this whole like army of dudes. He wants to like drive into other cars and like burn his hand with fucking lime like lie or whatever or whatever that shit is with the soap. Here you have a scared, low self esteem, low value loser. Loser. Okay, and his business partner is no different. The Asian I don't I don't even I don't want to go on and on and on about this. Like I could and I know lots of shit for a fact. I don't want this to be like unwatchable because it's so long. His business partner, Nick Co, Papa, RSC Papa, right? Another big bad boy. Had some like average looking white blonde chick marry him for his money. Okay, he runs around to a bunch of business conferences, networking and, and being a cool dude and all this shit, right? No. His hairs. <laughs> and again, this isn't about how much your hair is receding and how bald you're going. He's just a loser. I've talked to tons of people that have hung out with him. I've seen him. I, I, you can't fake being cool. Like, here's a real, here, like, let's get in on some real lessons here. You can't fake and pretend to be alpha. You can't fake and pretend to be cool. You can't disguise all your fucking low value shit and your, your insecurities and all this shit behind a bunch of videos. Okay, you can't buy some nice cameras and do a whole bunch of cutaways to these cities and put on your stupid fucking designer sunglasses and your stupid fucking flannel shirt and your leather coat. I'm not angry about this. I'm just stating facts. Okay. And your, and what else? Your stupid fucking hats, your necklace. Like the whole thing like is extremely laughable and he, and he, and he's gone so far down the rabbit hole of this facade that he's built. This is like real shit here. This, this is supposedly the leader of our community. You know, you have all these fucking minions and, and, and people in the community looking up to this man. Okay. And it's really fucking sad. It's like, I'm not trying to be offensive to anyone, but a really strong analogy would be if you had some fucking retard in a wheelchair. Okay. That's horrible at basketball. Just zipping around, being like, yeah, I'm the best shooter ever, and like, hey guys, like, coming at you, all this shit. And like, for some reason, all these fucking idiots that don't know any better are buying into this. Okay, and, he, and he's basically fronting and pretending to be a LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant, but he's no one. He's night and day difference. He will never be on their level. He never was even close. The whole thing is a fucking joke. 
It doesn't matter how many videos he get put out on his stupid channel. It doesn't matter how many likes he gets. It doesn't matter how many fucking digital product sales he makes. The whole thing is a fucking joke. I don't know if I spoke this part already, but I don't think I did actually. This ex intern said Tyler himself personally told me his count is under 50. 50 like count. A good portion from Social Circle. And then he says, What a dumbass. And this and this guy rips into the other instructors too. Jeffy fucks the ugly chicks. Everyone knows that. Confirmed. RSD Alex, who's now no longer with them, has tried to kill himself a bunch of times. Cried on the plane ride home after parting ways. These are not alpha guys. Fat Luke running the, the immersion program. You guys want to go spend several thousand dollars to go fucking wing with the Pillsbury Doughboy. Okay, this giant fucking slob who also has been <laughs> proven to hire models and shit for fake infield. Okay, and then you have Julian. I will say this. I res out of all their whole crew, I, res I respect Julian's content in 2012, 2013 the most. Okay, he had a lot of really good stuff, actually. Got some really good nuggets out of there. His CNN scandal happened. He became a huge pussy. Went on CNN, pussied out super hard. Lost tons of respect from his fans. Then went into like super sheltered mode with his book club reporting and all this bullshit. Also, he fucking humps uh, Tyler's ass. And it, again, if you have respect for the game, you can't fucking be front. You can't associate with someone like Tyler Durden. This guy is lying his ass off. He get, okay. To recap. Tyler Durden, a.k.a. Owen Cook. First of all, he's here illegally in our in America. He's here illegally. Fact. And someone want to go deport him? Please do. I don't fucking like the guy. Mostly because he fakes infield and because he lies about his results. He's here illegally. Second, he's putting on like the most try-hard poser, like fronting that can possibly be done with this with this new wardrobe shit. You're not you're not a fucking uh, Versace model, you're no one. You get demolished in field. I've seen it countless times. I always perform terrific in field. I don't always pull. I don't always get laid. I don't win every set. But my game is like objectively like light years beyond yours. Okay, it always has. It always will be. All this facade you build with your cult, with your fucking Instagram, with your videos, all this bullshit. It's a facade, and I and I will get into this more. I already told you guys, RST Derek, Manhor, Michael Sartain, all confirmed he's at about 50 day count, and it, this assistant is confirming it as well. Good portion from Social Circle. Cold Approach Master, right? No, wrong, false, fake, fake. And I'm going to tell you guys, I'm not going to try to make this video go too much longer. I'm going to tell you guys a story. That happened to me personally, where I realized this guy is a motherfucking liar. He's a motherfucking fake. Okay, the first shattering of like this celebrity dumb or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Okay, where I thought this guy was like this giant superstar was watching him get absolutely annihilated in the field. And for those of you who don't know what that means, at the bars, at the clubs, annihilated, like worse than. Most newbies that I've seen, that's not, a, again, that's not a slanderous or <clears throat> competitor attack. I don't care about making money on pickup. I don't care about tarnishing these guys' reputations. I care when I passionately want to get guys better at this, when I passionately want to solve this problem for guys, when I have solved it countless times on the first fucking day that these guys meet up with me. They say, I've never pulled before. I've watched all these RST videos. I've bought all these RST products. Okay, listen. I give them a two-hour talk. They go out, they pull. Which means take a girl home. They go out the next night, they pull. They go out the next night, they pull. They go out the next week, they pull. I'm, they're like, wow, I, I can fuck. This problem is solved. I can fucking pull now. I'm like, yeah, because I fucking taught you how to pull. Because I know how to pull really, really well. More so than anyone. And I, again, I have... 
proof to back that up. Who has 100 infield pulls on camera? No one. Because they can't fucking do it 100 times. Off camera. They just can't. Like... Okay. Again, I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> I'm reiterating. I'm, I'm repeating myself a lot here. Uh, maybe I should have fucking went through a presentation or something. I specifically was fascinated by Tyler Durden getting destroyed. Destroyed. Annihilated in the field. And I saw it many other times besides this. And I talked to all these other guys. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is supposed to be our, like, our savior, our fucking champion, our leader. Okay. I went and talked to these girls. Oh, he seems gay. Oh, he's really creepy. Oh, he seems really weird. Watch his fucking infield. The, the, the non-stage infield. He, this is basically how it goes almost every time. Hey, how you doing? I'm Owen. I'm from Canada. Yeah, I'm not drinking. I, I don't drink. Yeah, I'm sober. Oh, hey. So, who, who are you here with? Oh, you're adorable. Oh, you're cool. It's like really fucking cringy. It's really bad. It doesn't work. Okay, all the... These things you see, these little stunts he's pulling on the on these flashy videos and stuff, they're paying pe they're paying girls to do that. He has Instagram photos where he's like reclining his feet on a girl's ass, and there's like another girl like behind him, like lifting her dress a little bit. It, it's just like really pathetic, and it, it's gone so far off the deep end. And I've occasionally like poked, like I've just taken like a quick look at some of the videos here and there as they've progressed over the years. And it's really going off the deep end. He, he has these guys all like focused in on him, and I, I can maybe put some of these in the comments. And it, it, it's, it's, I know how cults operate. Like I'm a smart guy. I'm, I'm familiar with the Heaven's Gate cult with David Koresh and like all this other shit. He's following those principles. Like he has a bunch of fucking guys around him, and they're, and, and Tyler's like, do this, and they're like, yeah. And he's like, do this. And he's like, yeah. And it, he's teaching them like shitty technical concepts. But there's like this euphoria, like similar to like a mass in a church. Similar to what was going on in these, in these fucking cults with like fucking Charles Manson and like all this bullshit, right? And that some of you guys might think this has gone off the deep end and like this is conspiracy theories, blah, blah. No, it's not. I will show you some examples. He is, he has built a cult following. He has a cult following. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna face countless amounts of bullshit from making this video in the first place. Okay, because again, a bunch of guys don't even like him being challenged. They think he's fucked five thousand girls. Do the math on that. Okay, who's closing daily? No one. It's your celebrity. How many days in the year? 365. Okay, so every th three years is a thousand. Okay. Three times five, that'd be 15 years of closing daily. Okay, not happening. Not. I, mean, I don't even need to make mathematical arguments here about how absurd this shit is. Especially when four of his close friends are telling me that he's at 50 count. Three of them are telling me that in, in the next RSD intern. And I see him getting destroyed in field countless times. And I hear about evidence of him faking infield. And I've caught him in countless lies. Okay, so here's here's where we get into some more uh, back on track shit. Okay, I'm going to give you a good example here of his lies. Manhor, my former roommate, was like, dude, this, this guy lies his ass off. I've caught him in over, I've caught him in over 100 lies personally. I, myself, as J-Mall, have caught him in tons of lies. I don't want to have anything to do with this guy. He's fucking shady. He lies his ass off to the moon and back. Okay, All his fucking stupid bullshit sunglasses and, and ripped jeans and everything will never make him cool. Okay, and I think deep down he knows that. Which is why he acts so fucking eccentric and crazy. Because he knows. He's still a loser. Like all this shit with the game and like making a million videos and posting on RSC Nation. Like all this shit. I think the main reason for that, if I'm being totally honest, was to build himself up in his own mind. Falsely. As a facade. Because if you can't have real value, the girls don't think he's cool, because he's not. 
the hot girls don't like him. Okay, maybe they'll marry him for his money, maybe they'll fuck him for his money, just like they did with fucking loser papa. You can't fucking fake this shit. You can't you can't just make a hundred RFC videos or whatever and like respond in these forum posts and like do fancy cutaways to cityscapes and shit with your with your fancy production and your YouTube videos and like you know, put up travel around the world teaching these programs, all this stuff. His game blows. Fact. End of story. He is a low value man. You can wrap him up in a bunch of facades and a bunch of lies and have a bunch of fucking losers globally worshipping him. But he's still a fucking loser. You can put these designer sunglasses on him. And I'm really excited for you to fucking watch this, Tyler. Because... I know, and you know, that you're a fucking loser. You can put on your orange leather jacket and your fucking gay scarf, and you can run around. And by the way, for those of you that have seen my arrest video, and then realize that it wasn't a rape thing, Tyler and Papa run around telling everyone I raped someone. I showed you guys, matter-of-factly, there was no rape charge. I showed you guys, matter-of-factly, my other charges with kidnapping and uh, coercion and gross lewdness. There was no trial, there was no conviction. I showed you, matter of fact, I showed you the fucking empirical screenshots from the casino. And they're running on 10 people and rapists. You know what else to Owen said, Tyler Durden? He said that I threatened his kids. I didn't even know he had kids at the time that he made this claim. Okay, I had multiple people coming. Why are you threatening Owen's kids? No, they're, again, lying their fucking asses off. Building this fantasy world Okay, real social dynamics, like, hurrah, 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 okay? That company doesn't churn out real players. The instructors are not fucking killing it. Julian might have been somewhat back in the day, but I've talked to people that have hung out with him extensively as well. My game wipes the floor with his. Wipes the floor. It's not even a question. There's, there used to be threads back when I was banned, like, right before I was banned in 2013. Julian versus Jamal. He's not close to my level. It's a fact. It's a fact. Like, and this isn't a self-proclamation. I have the infield to back it up. I can go out any night of the week and fucking show it. I can, mind that this would never happen, but I can hang out with him for extended periods of time, go into the same venues, and outmatch him, skill-wise. Because I'm a lot better. And Tyler isn't even the same, isn't even anywhere into the same league as me and Julian. Tyler is fucking with the wiffle ball in his fucking backyard, okay? Telling everyone that he's the fucking king. Alright, so enough about that. Let me go into a lie that Tyler Durden told on my boot camp in 2012. And this, this will kind of give you guys a direct window into what kind of fucking dumb idiot this guy is, what kind of, how full of shit this guy is, okay? It's good, it feels good to make shit like this, because you have so many fucking idiots, okay? And it's, it's not really their fault. Like, I was in the same boat. I was like, starstruck. I was like, this is my hero. I was defending him, just like someone would defend like the existence of Jesus Christ. I'm not even going to get into like a religious debate. But certain beliefs cause groups of people that have been brainwashed, especially in cult-like scenarios, to turtle up and, you know, not even consider the arguments from an objective, empirical standpoint, or from a, a rational or logical standpoint. I'm not just like, hey, I'm a competing coach, or I'm a, you know, I used to work for RSD, then I started my own thing, and I think I'm better than them, so let me just slander Tyler. No. Why are three of his close friends saying he's a 50 count? Why is this ex-RSD intern confirming that? Why is there a whole bunch of evidence that he faked infield? Why have I caught him lying like, 
tons of times. Why is Manowar caught him lying a hundred times? These are all like very strong things. Like this, this isn't just like me having a vendetta or just like being anti-RSD or any of this stupid shit. Um, and the the fi the fake infield stuff, like that shit is just ugh. That like makes me sick. Here you have in, in putting out thirty digital products, like Jesus fucking Christ, and, and not even from qualified dudes. Again, I can teach comprehensive night game in two hours. Nothing more to be said about it. Guys that get my program, my product. Guys that take my live coaching, they learn how to pull. They start crushing it. Done. Problem solved. I don't want them to come back to me. I don't want them to buy 30 products from me. If I didn't fix the problem on the first try, that means I failed. That simple. And again, I'm not in this for the money. And for those of you that don't believe me that I actually care about helping guys, I actually do because I grew up, I sat with two fucking dudes at lunch as a senior in high school. I didn't kiss a girl until I was in college. I was raised very Catholic, I was raised very fucking moral and strict and all this shit, right? And I'm not saying I'm like this giant degenerate now. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe I actually could make that argument. But, I feel the pain of the, all these fucking guys that don't know what to do, they don't know what to say, they're, they're fucking tired of jerking off at their house, they're tired of fucking striking out. Especially if you're successful, like in your career, especially if you have a whole bunch of shit going on and you're actually a cool dude. It really fucking sucks to just have that part of your life, like, empty, right? Like, maybe you're lonely, maybe maybe you're like, um, you're frustrated, you're down on yourself. Like, I've, I've worked with guys that are, that are fucking sucking at this shit for five years. And I really feel for them because I was at that point too. That's not a marketing ploy. That's not a fucking ruse to get you onto my side. I know what it's like very, very, very personally, probably more so than most of you do, to be fucking bullied, to be fucking looked down upon, to, to have no skills with these chicks, to get destroyed all night at a, at a venue. Actually, what got me onto Mystery Method was I had won a poker tournament and first place, and I got all this money and I brought like 10 of my friends out to a bar and we all like I bought them all drinks and all this shit and I you know I was like yeah I'm the man and I tried talking to all these different girls before I learned game and I, I got blown out like the whole fucking night and I, I got I went back with my my best friend at the time to my house and I was like dude like it fucking sucked like you all you all know like the pain of like getting Annihilated and like these like these chicks were like laughing at me on my opens and like it's like a fucking mockery and um you know I'm being real with you guys right now and like I said to him I'm like there has to be a fucking better way like we ha there has to be a better way enter <laughs> mystery method and so I started fucking memorizing openers memorizing routines. Memorizing negs, memorizing false time constraints, um, working on calibration, all you know, all this other bullshit. And one of the first nights out I ever did game, I already had all of Mystery's concepts like fully internalized. They were all automatic. I was doing all his advanced stuff. I was doing pawn, pawning, and merging of set and all that stuff. That's just how my mind operates, and that's why I like to bring all this value to the community is because. It's the same thing with poker. Like I, I placed third in my first tournament out of like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And the only reason I placed third, I, I had the highest advantage going into the last three. I had the most chips. And the rules change when you're down to a low amount of people. So I had to adjust and then the next tournament I got first. I'm able to just quickly, very, very, very quickly absorb and assimilate this information in any skill game, I, same thing happened with chess. It's not my brain's built. I'm not like, oh, look, you know, I'm some, give me all this praise. I just 
was born genetically, and, and I've mentioned in other videos, there's a book, The Blank Slate by Steven Pinker, he argues very solidly, that, empirically, that most of your intelligence levels are determined at birth. Okay, so, fact. Um, okay, okay, okay. So let's cut all the bullshit now. I'm going to get into the little story here where, where Tyler lied his ass off to me and you guys can take away from that what you want and, and then we'll end the video. So, June 2012. Tyler Durden, a.k.a. Owen Cook, a.k.a. illegal immigrant into the United States as of the present day, a.k.a. someone please report him to immigration because I don't feel like doing it. Or getting involved. Take a boot camp with him. He's having me do. Jesus, I can make a whole other video about this. He's having me do shit like jump up and down with like five other men at a venue holding hands. Keep in mind, I'm at 103 count. Like, like I was, I was <laughs> far better than him. That was, that was one of the, the the big kind of shocks and ahas on the program was that. I actually was like far better than Todd and Tyler, who were my instructors that I was paying two grand on a credit card to learn from. And I had like a natural friend who saw me jumping up. <laughs> he wasn't out with me that night, but he just happened to be at the venue. And he saw me jumping up and down, holding these dudes' hands and being like, yeah, like yelling out and shit because we were trying to bring the party. Okay, one of a million flawed concepts in RSD. And everyone was looking at us like we're fucking queers because that's what we looked like and that's what we were portraying. And he was like, dude, like, I don't think I want to be friends with you anymore. Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like, no joke. <laughs> and I was like, hey, 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 I'm sorry. Like, I paid for this dating program and it was one of the exercises and blah, blah, blah. Retarded. Tyler was having us open sets without any words. Okay. Retarded. Like, to prove that subcommunications work. Like imagine rolling up on a hot chick and you're just like, like you're a mime or some, some bullshit, okay? And he's trying to demo and, and getting fucking destroyed. <laughs> okay, cut it, <laughs> cutting to the story. <laughs> it's funny thinking about, thinking back to like how consistently and how hardcore he was destroyed in sets and in interactions. It really blew the fuck out of my mind, like... Like, here, like, imagine rolling into this, thinking this is like, okay, this is like the top guy I can learn from. Like, this is going to be life-changing. Like, this, you know, I'm so humbled to be in his presence and all this shit. And then, like, like I had a threesome during program with these two chicks that had a wet t-shirt contest. And so, like, these two stunner girls. There's another guy that's popular in the community right now that was actually on the same program. And we're close friends now. And I won't say his name, but he was crushing it, too. And then here you have, like, Tyler and Todd... Where like the leaders and the teachers just getting destroyed and and saying dumb shit in the sets and it's like what the fuck are you doing? And I, again, I, I I came from a mystery background, so I was I was doing mystery type stuff. And I I've said before, like I think a bunch of that stuff is still really good, but a bunch of it's really bad. Bottom line is all this stuff needs to be vetted and tested and evolved and all this stuff. And I think mystery really failed to evolve. And I I still have a lot of respect for him and. You know, I'm not talking shit on him at all. He, to me, he's a million times cooler than Tyler Durden and Papa. Even though he fucking emotionally melts down on Facebook and stuff over his child custody. Okay. Shit, I'm like all over the fucking place. So here's the, here's the story. There's a whole bunch of other details about what happened on the boot camp and like my performance and blah blah blah. But long story short, the final day, the final night of boot camp. Boot camps are Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. I crushed it on the Saturday night. Like I think that's what that was the night with the wet t-shirt girls and all that stuff. Sunday. Day, day after the last day of program, 
I'm at the hot seat. For those of you that don't know what a hot seat is, it's when RSC charges you $300 <laughs> to watch with Breakdown live. And for those of you who know my product, I've given you like almost 100 interactions to keep with Breakdowns. This RSD shit with the hot seat, you watch it live, you forget most of what you saw, it's like watching a movie. It's almost of no use to you, and a lot of the shit's staged, so you can't even extract real lessons from a lot of this stuff, okay, because it's fucking bullshit. Um, taking my daily supplements here. Okay, so Sunday I'm on the hot seat and Tyler had me come and sit next to him because he's like, wow, this guy's like fucking really good at game. And I'm sitting up next to Tyler and there's like 30 guys in the hot seat or something like that. And Tyler says like about me, he's like, this guy basically had like a perfect night last night. I don't like to give too much critique if like their game was really solid and all that stuff like he's like he had like a 10 out of 10 night okay and this was 2012 this is at 103 count now i'm at 758 again late counters and everything blah 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 blah. before everyone starts jumping on the bandwagon and i'll give it a separate video about that it's just an important objective metric of skill just like you would track sales closes in, in sales okay with cold cold calling or anything you know, cold knocking, door-to-door -door sales. It's an objective metric. It's important. So Tyler tells us, here we go. And I still have these screenshots for anyone that's doubting this thing, thinking I'm just fucking lying my ass off. Because this, this is what they'll tell you. And this is what the instru RSD instructors do. This is their game plan, is that they... When I expose them on this stuff, they say, oh, he's, he's completely lying, or he photoshopped this stuff. No. In my arrest video, I showed how they stole the immersion program thing for me. I had the email chains. Not lying. I have no reason to lie. Like, Think about this. Let me say this. Again, I'm going off on tangent upon tangent upon tangent. If I ever once faked an infield and I was found out, okay, first of all, I hold it on such high regard that I would never do it. But if I ever did it and was found out, or I, I brought a really hot girl home and I was and we went to my room and she just blew me but we didn't fuck and somehow she talked to my friends and was like yeah I didn't fuck him like 100% I didn't fuck him like or any permutation or, or derivative of this sort about lying about skills or results my word isn't good anymore in the community and that means a lot to me and it should mean a lot to the other coaches which is why I actively call them out. Because these motherfuckers, okay, once you hire an actress to do an infield footage with you and you're instructing her, like, okay, you're going to pretend like you're being pulled. Once you, Todd, inflate your, your lay count, what was it? He said it was 90 and he said 150 to 300. Once you do that publicly, okay, don't, don't fucking go come, or come full circle and make, make all this Todd truth bullshit and be a crusader. Okay, you're just as guilty as these motherfuckers are. Owen. <laughs> Don't even get me started on Owen. Lying countless times that I caught him. Lying countless times that Manwar caught him. You know, putting out shit that he just crushes it. Like, this is how Owen usually usually used to start his free tour speeches. Hey, I'm, you know, so I'm Tyler Durden from the game and, uh, fucked a shit ton of bitches. You know, like, could have fucked more, but, um, you know, it's a lot more than you motherfuckers. <laughs> okay. No. Lies. Bullshit. You're fabricating your lay count. You suck at cold approach. Your infield filming is garbage. Wrapping yourself up with designer sunglasses and a fucking orange leather jacket and all this stupid fucking bullshit with the ripped jeans and the scarves. Like, I'm not exaggerating. Look at his, look at his video. Like, you, like, you can tell. Like, he's embraced his persona. Like... I am now cool because I have these fucking designer sunglasses and this fucking bullshit scarf and these ripped jeans and you can tell he's wearing like almost the same ripped jeans every time. 
the same orange jacket, and the same fucking dumbass scarf. Okay, I don't know, I don't know where you, in what world you you think it's now all of a sudden cool to wear a scarf. Okay, look at someone like Sonny Arvado, like bodybuilder, like alpha male to the max. You won't catch him wearing a fucking stupid ass scarf. Okay, especially not as a fucking loser poser to try to be cool to try to act like he has an in crowd by posting parties on Instagram that your weed dealer roommate orchestrated and that are mostly full of dudes and you're gonna put out videos being like see see how to get the ultimate swagger and I'll, like, fuck off like what the fuck are you doing it's like Frank Harrow <laughs> Frank Night Game, Pick Up Decoded, putting out these fucking videos about how to be the ultimate alpha male wolf and all this bullshit. And like, Google Frank Hair, Google uh, Pick Up Decoded, Frank Night Game, whatever the fuck, um, alpha versus beta male or whatever. And he, and he has a video, like an infield video, where he shows himself tapping a girl's shoulder and then like running off into the night. And this is supposed to like demonstrate that he's like some alpha wolf. Like, this shit, like, it's just, like, really, really upsetting. Like, when you're a real player in the game, when you have real skills, when you're friends with the best guys, when you actually make amazing shit happen on a daily basis, like, I actually do do that. Like, there's amazing shit happening on a daily basis. Like, I could write a book. I could write a book every, like, two, three months or maybe even every one month. Like, I'm living, like, the life. I'm crushing everything with these girls, like, in a real way, like, in a, in a legitimate way. And it, and it's there's something to be said for that. And some of you guys, like, cause it, it sounds crazy, like, oh, 750 girls. I have over 100 field pulls on camera. No, I haven't filmed all of them. I don't want to fucking little nerdy camera team following me around in all my waking hours. I also have enough lessons out of those hundred pulls to show you all the important stuff you need to know and, and it's still way too much footage for anyone to even digest or, or watch or appreciate. Okay. We're over an hour now. Here, I'm just going to finish the story. Okay. So I'm sitting next to Tyler. This is the hot seat on a Sunday, the day after the last day of boot camp. He says, this guy basically had a perfect night, blah, blah, blah. Okay, wonderful. Then he goes on. <laughs> Here's where it gets interesting. He says to the group, hey, group, and there's like 30 dudes. Okay, okay. Cult, fanboy worshipers. Um, I'm really happy I'm making this video, by the way, because... Almost 100% of you out there, and I'm talking to you advanced guys watching this, have no fucking balls. It's true. Oh yeah, you're, you're tearing up the club with same night lays? Why don't you try calling out a fucking clown that's, that's leading the community, okay, with, with it being well known that he very well could try to put repercussions on you, especially since it already fucking happened. Where I was arrested, and they, they tried to fucking bury me and shit. Alright? So it takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of fucking balls. I call these people out directly every fucking time. And people say, oh, you're a sociopath, or you're a psychopath. Um, oh, don't you have anything better to do? Yeah, of course I do. I run a fucking business, I date a lot of hot, a lot of hot chicks. I mean, a non pickup business that makes a lot of money. You think I just want to fucking sit on Facebook all day and and flame back and forth with these with Frank Harrow with Frank Night Game. Okay, breaking breaking down infields. He made these specialized shirts that say Francis on them. Like th like this shit. Like so much of this shit is like so off the deep end for me. It's like like I literally want to just like spend a day just like fucking vomiting my brains out. Like I came into this as one of the most introverted and nerdy guys that, out there. No no bullshit. Like, <laughs> far, far worse off than almost all of you.
terrified. She, when, and I can confirm this too. I have text. When I first made out with a girl, which happened in my first year of college, I was physically trembling. In fact, I can show text. It's embarrassing. I'm just trying to show you guys where I came from. Physically trembling. My first time I had sex, I busted in like 30 seconds. Most of you probably did, actually. But like, sitting with two dudes at lunch, we would debate like quantum physics and like poker and we would like the singularity with artificial intelligence overtaking human intelligence and I would go to the library and day trade stocks and all this shit. Never in a million fucking years, trust me, did I envision being at this stage. And I've said this in other videos, but I think the reason why is because of my hyper-analytical genetic abilities coupled with extreme verbal abuse as a child. My mother relentlessly destroyed me. And I probably still need to get counseling for it. I'm not saying that makes me a fucking crazy person as an adult. I just never fully dealt with it. I think it left a big void with needing external validation, which in many ways I'm thankful for because it's what turned me into optimizing and mastering my pickup system. I combine my ability to learn skill games with my massive chasm of like never having the validation that I should have as a child. This isn't a sob story. That's just my best guess at how I ended up in this position. But I never would have fucking ever guessed being in this position. I was so awkward. I was I was so terrified. I grew. I, I genetically have social anxiety. I have general anxiety. That's why I drink all the time. I have obsessive compulsive disorder, where I just repeatedly hyperanalyze things and annoy the shit out of my close friends with analyses of scenarios and stuff like this. But I actually can demolish a club. I can actually demolish game. Like anyone that's hung out with me, anyone that's seen my infields, I can go into a club and I can pull a nine or above with high probability. And almost no one can do that. And that's why I'm here to teach you guys about this shit. And that's why I actually give a fuck about breaking you out of that place that I was in for so long. Because, truth be told, fucking hot girls all the time is actually pretty fucking cool, right? Like, there's a bunch of downsides too, like the drama and like the, you know, whatever you want to call it. I, I don't have pregnancy risks because of the vasectomy. You can call it STD risk. You can call it, I don't know. I don't know what, <laughs> it actually is a huge detriment to, to advancing my business being with these, banging these whores all the time. These, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that term. These uh, beautiful ladies. Um, all right, so let's I'll finish up this fucking Owen story, and we'll just call we'll call it a call it a day. So to the next one. He says to the group of 30 guys, and I'm so happy, Owen, that you did this, because it liberated me from ever believing any of your shit again. And, you know, man whores confirmations helped as well. But as you watch this, and I know you will watch this, you know exactly what a fucking lying poser piece of shit you were, and here we are announcing it to everyone, okay? And I will grow this channel a lot. I already have a whole bunch of big time marketers involved. I have strategies from the simple pickup guys. This channel will get big. Lots of people will see this. It's gonna be on Reddit. And you're also an illegal immigrant. So 
Maybe you'll be back in Canada soon. So, Owen says to the group, Hey guys, I went to Ruth Chris, I think that's how you say it, Ruth Chris, Ruth Chris's, Ruth Chris Steakhouse uh, during the break or before the hot seat or whatever. And I met, he said he had like one of the top four hottest girls that he's ever seen in his life or top five, like, or maybe even top three. He basically like really sold it to the group that he had met one of the hottest girls he'd ever seen personally. And I'm thinking, okay, this is the great Tyler Durden, even though I had seen him get destroyed <laughs> in the field. I'm thinking, okay, at least he's met tons of girls in his pickup journey over the past 10 years or whatever. And here he is saying this is one of the top three or top four girls of his entire life. Like, holy shit, right? And he was supposed to fly back to LA like that night on, on the Sunday after the hot seat. But I took it upon myself, and some of you might call me a bastard for this or whatever the fuck. I took it upon myself to memorize the girl's phone number off of his phone. I did this mostly, and I'll be honest here, I did this mostly as a personal challenge to myself that if he didn't close, that I was going to try to close and that I would have one-upped the great Tyler Durden, okay? So I have a good memory. I talk in other videos how you can memorize phone numbers. I was sitting next to him at the front of the room and he had his phone out and I memorized the chick's number, okay? Boom, boom. And then, you know, casually took my phone out shortly after, put the number in, compared it again, because I could still see the number on his phone, because he was texting her during the hot seat. And I'm like, okay, I got the number. Like, I confirmed it's, it's the number, the same number that he had in his phone. And uh, I have it now and all this shit, right? <clears throat> he calls this woman in front of the whole hot seat to show off again, building the facade, building the internal fantasy that he's this big badass player, okay, mostly through lies, mostly through fabrication, mostly through distortion, mostly through just a self created world, which is what he's what he's done over all these years. Okay. Fact. The girl answers, she's like, oh, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, I can come, and he was saying really cheesy shit. He was like, oh, I can be a good Bible boy on the couch and, like, not touch you, just have my hands in my lap and all this shit, and, and she shut him down, like, hardcore. She's like, no, 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 sorry, no, no, not happening, nope, nope, nope. Hangs up, ha, 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 what a bitch, or whatever. Next day, I text Todd. I'm like, hey, what happened with Owen and the girl? Because I, I, that was actually out of respect. Todd says, oh, he didn't get to fucking close. He flew back to LA. So, in my mind, it's open game. He's gone in LA. This girl rejected him. I had her up. My angle was, hey... I just moved to Philadelphia. It wasn't true. I've been there for like a couple of years. I just moved to Philadelphia. Um, my friend Owen just met you. Uh, he's from LA. He's a whatever the fuck lifestyle coach or personal development coach, or whatever. He gave me your number, told me I should meet up with you. Do you want to like show me around the city? Oh, yeah, he was nice, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, that could be cool. I turned it sexual. Oh, um, he said you're really sexy, all this stuff, we're flirting. We started sexting. And I can dig these messages up, I still have them. And we got on the phone, like, she's like, can we talk on the phone? I want to hear your voice. We get on the on a, a vocal phone call, talk for like 30 minutes. I'm flirting. I set up logistics. Everything's going to go down. I'm like, just send me a picture. I don't know what you look like. Maximum. 
being generous. This was a six out of ten. The black chick has nothing to do with her rating. Black chick, six out of ten. Sent me the picture, and I was like, Jesus. I wasn't even interested in meeting her. And I can just go on and on and on with these examples. Okay. Owen convinced the group, this was one of the hottest girls he'd ever met, that it was like a perfect 10, indisputably. In this picture, the girl was not even, she was just like just barely average, like it wasn't anything at all that was special. And this is what he's spouting off, okay? And I talked to Manhor, I moved in with Manhor, um, like six months later, Jonathan Jacobson, who assaulted me in a casino, I talked about that in my arrest video. He's like, dude, I've caught Owen in like over a hundred lies, he just bullshits his ass off about his skills, about his results, he's like, he's terrible in field, I'm like, yeah, I fucking saw him get destroyed in field, like, destroyed! Like, and I've taught a lot of programs on my own since then. He got destroyed more so than most hard cases get destroyed. And yeah, that was 2012, but I also assisted... What is it like? Um, other years with, with their fucking stupid programs. It was the same shit. And he had a girlfriend for like two years who was like using him for his money and then dumped him and cheated or whatever. He's a hero in his own mind. He's a legend in his own mind. He's a master in his own mind. In, the, in reality, he hasn't fucked that many girls, especially not from Cold Approach. He's terrible in the field. He hides behind this whole facade where like, he makes a bunch of noise being eccentric on his videos, puts out a bunch of content, tries to fucking style it all up with the with the stupid fucking sunglasses and all this shit and the leather coat and all like it that shit uh, like talk about try hard like that to me that's the equivalent of like taking a picture against a fucking random Lamborghini like I think I'm a really cool dude I think I think guys like Sonny and Chris Wilde are really cool dude do we need to fucking put on designer sunglasses and these fucking queer scarves and and these like two-tone leather coats and all this shit and st stupid fucking hats and stuff like you've just seen him like building onto this wardrobe and then he does these videos with with Luke who's just like disgustingly fat like morbidly obese and is, <laughs> and is trying to be like a role model for all these fucking guys that don't know what the fuck is going on, okay? That are like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop everything and move to Las Vegas, and and everything's gonna change, and I'm just this fat guy. It's just gonna transform me along with the help of like his forty-year-old ginger friend who's like almost fully bald, who grows not not only in field like that. This will be the last time I say that because it's. I'm beating a dead horse. I showed over 50 girls a whole selection of his pictures. Two out of ten, three out of ten. Yuck. Face only a mother could love. Ew. He looks creepy. He looks weird. He looks gay. These are girls that didn't interact with him. What about the girls that interact with him? Oh, he's super fucking awkward. Oh, he's super fucking weird. Oh, someone save me. This is the fucking leader of our community. This is the fucking guy you all worship. Give me a fucking break. This guy is a fucking joke. He lies his ass off. He's disgraceful. He fucking fakes infield. I, I caught him another time telling everyone he fucking pulled a model home. And I, I, I walked with him home that night and he went home alone. I never have done that, ever. Like made up, like fabricated a story like that. I never have hired a fucking actress. I never have said this is a fucking tan and and one of the hottest girls in my life, just to impress a bunch of fucking cult worshippers. I don't do cult exercises, and that, 
again, you get, like you guys might think I like have gone off the deep end here. I can private message me because it's probably better to deal with that way. PM me or email me at epdatingcoach at gmail.com. I'll show you a few videos where he's just trying to command presence. And I'm very well versed in, in these tactics, not because I use them myself, but because when I reject religion as a factual system and as a way of life, I was terrified about going to hell because my whole upbringing and my whole belief system was centered around the fact that there was a real heaven and a real hell. So when I started doubting all these things, I was terrified that I was going to burn eternally and suffer eternally. It's facts, it's true. So I learned how religion operates. And Tyler is running his business the same way that these fucking crazy cults run their own shit. He had, and these guys, like, here, I'm already, like, just saying in advance. The comments are just going to start flooding in. Fuck you, rapist, right? Okay, I already addressed that in my arrest video. No rape charge, no convictions on anything. Um, you're a hater. Tyler has done so much for us. No, he really hasn't. He's, he's led you astray in massive ways. His videos are purposely misleading. And a lot of that is because they don't even know the fucking correct techniques. He's hiring actresses, okay, but this isn't fucking Hollywood. I'm, I'm not putting out videos of me taking home chicks like, like you would see in a fucking Hollywood production. Why? Because you can't fucking learn from that and because it's disgraceful, it's disrespectful, and it's clownery, and it's unacceptable, and it's fucking bullshit. This shit, like, I don't know. I need to fucking end this video soon because I'm getting really angry about all the fucking clownery. Like, to sum up, Tyler Durden is not a fucking legend. He's not a hero. He's not anyone to be admired, okay? He's a disgrace. He's a fucking fraud. He's a, he fabricates a whole bunch of shit. He lies. He's shady. Uh, he's involved in setting certain criminal situations up. He's an illegal immigrant in our country, in America, illegally. Fact. Completely illegal. Verified that through multiple sources. He doesn't have a fucking visa. Maybe I, maybe I actually will re report him to the fucking immigration services. I'll probably piss the fanboys off more. Not, not out of spite, out of vengeance or anything, because he doesn't even fucking belong here. He should get the fuck out of here. He should stop putting out videos, stop wearing his stupid fucking... Bullshit new clothing line, trying to act like a GQ model, fucking riding on the fame of, of his weed dealing roommate and all this shit. You got these fucking fanboys. Like it's it's insane. Cause I used to be I used to be a fanboy too, like in the beginning. When I first like learned about him coming to my town and all this shit, I was like, oh my god, like, this is a once life opportunity. That was, like, the biggest waste of money I've ever spent. The only thing it really did for me was really, like, kind of give me, like, a nice kick in the ass to get things moving on my own accord, okay? But it was a real eye-opener watching Tyler and Todd get demolished, catching them both in lies about their skills and results, okay, catching them both faking infield, It's it's really like it's really a sad state where we're at in the community. We've got people like David Kocher, Kocher, whatever the fuck, Coker, who just got his first kiss last year. Okay, he's running probably the biggest pickup forum on the group, on the internet. We've got Todd Truth. Okay, tell me what part of Todd Truth involves you lying about your fucking lay count publicly. Tell me about what part of Todd Truth involves faking an infield. You've got a fucking giant fucking fat ass running a program that I designed and I developed. Watch my arrest video and you'll see the emails on that. And now he now he's running the show. We have this big fucking fat guy that doesn't give a shit. 
the guys are all coming out of there sucking shit. I, I, I check into these things because I care what, what's going on, what's the, what's the outcome of these programs. You sign up for Vegas, Vegas Immersion, you're gonna, you're gonna still fucking blow a game. And then you got people trying to come at me, trying to say, "Oh, your shit's like your lay count's fake." Who has a hundred infield pull, infield pulls on camera? Tell me. I'd like to see. I'd like to learn from them. Who's ever caught me once lying about closing a poll or a date with a hot chick? Do you know how many fucking blowjobs and handjobs and makeouts I've gotten? That didn't close, that didn't count, that basically in the, in the terms of keeping a score, whereas if I almost didn't even go out, it's, it's like if I didn't go out versus getting a blowjob from a 10, in the grand scheme of c counting my lay count, they're both the same, they both add zero to the lay count. Who's ever caught me faking an infield or, or lying about anything? No one, because I don't do it. Like my player uncle, he's like, man, these fucking bitches like that are lying all the time. He's like, tell me why if a girl is being truthful to you and being respectful to you, tell me why even one time ever her story should have a contradiction or should have like a, a hole in it or should sound shady. If you're not fucking cheating, and you're not being a fucking piece of shit, then you're never going to have shady stories. You're never going to have holes in your stories. You're never, you're never going to have contradictions in your stories. Which is why all my fucking results in infield is pure. And which is why Owen and these other fucking jokers, Todd, is not. And you guys should be ashamed of yourselves. There's a lot of fucking young men, a lot of successful men, a lot of a lot of cool men that have a lot of potential that we could unleash as proper coaches. That you guys have decided to mislead with fake infields, with fucking bullshit, superfluous information, contradictory concept. Run around off the fucking wall garbage videos on your RST Nation or whatever the fucking your your stupid videos you put out to try to give them the solution thirty times through different products. The solution. The solution is to keep buying the products. Okay? And maybe one day, which will be never, you'll get good. Like I really just had enough of this shit. When I, you know, how many times I've seen like when I try to call out Owen or like I state how I know that his lay count is like really low and it's, and he and he sucks in field and all this stuff. Oh, like you're dissing the the great master and like all this stuff and like it's all bullshit. Like hopefully you've seen the the passion that's come through in this video. Hopefully you've seen. That we have a guy running around like a fucking clown, full of shit, misleading the fuck out of you, ripping you the fuck off, trying so, 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 so hard, even beyond the making money off of you and everything else, trying so hard to finally be cool and to finally be an alpha male, but fucking failing, okay? It, all this stupid wardrobe shit... He's piggybacking on these fucking Hollywood Hills parties, you know, posting on Instagram with chicks that are using you for your money. I will tell you straight up to your fucking face, your stupid fucking illegal immigrant face. You still are not the Brad Pitt from Fight Club. You are the Edward Norton. You are the fucking loser. You are the fucking pussy. You are not respected outside of the fucking facade and cult that you've built because the real you shines through the real you in field sucks with women at cold approach pickup which you act like you're an expert on 
The real you fucking lies his ass off. Okay? And putting a fucking hat on your stupid bald head and the, and the stupid fucking designer sunglasses and all this stupid shit, okay? You're almost 40. You have these kids you joke about as being accidents and you, you tell them that to your face and put on video to impress your stupid fucking cult. All this shit's fucking disgusting and it's rude. Okay, you have no class. And you run around like, I'm the, I'm the fucking guru. I'm the self-help expert. I'm this fucking savior for all of you. It's bullshit. It's garbage. Okay, and your associate, the co-founder of Real Social Dynamics, Nicholas, dumbass fucking retard co, okay, who's going around, I, I paid 10 grand for a mastermind in Hollywood Hills last October. And I can show the texts and emails from this too. And Nick did as well, Papa. We didn't know we were both going. It was, it was a mastermind with a bunch of big players in the marketing space. 50 people signed up, 10 grand each entry. I paid 10 grand for a ticket. I saw Papa Nico on the attendance list. He went to the conference organizers and said, this guy is a rapist. Those guys hung out with me and talked with me and I told them the story, told them there was no rape charge, no conviction on any other charges. They refunded big badass Papa and said, get the fuck out of here. And I stayed at the conference. Papa married an average white chick and she's using him for his money. He's not an alpha guy, he never will be. Owen is not an alpha guy, he never will be. Being eccentric on a whole bunch of YouTube videos that get a bunch of views due to fucking stupid marketing and shit, okay? Or convincing a bunch of fucking naive, low value fanboys that your stupid low value ass is actually high value. Okay, with your little anecdotal stories and your stupid fucking new wardrobe and your your fucking fat sidekick. It's, all of that shit is a disgrace. It's all fucking pathetic. You are all losers. Okay, I'm just saying it straight up. You're all fucking losers. I don't give a shit if my channel has low a low view count or anything like this. I'm about to be... I'm not even going to say it, but things will change. The landscape will change in the coming year. Just want to let you guys know. All this fucking facade and community and cult that you've built. Does not change the fact that you're losers. It just doesn't. It's not a spiteful statement. It's not a competitor slight. Okay. It's a fact. You guys are losers. It's very fucking self-evident for anyone that hangs out with you, for anyone that knows you. And there's lots of facts that support that. That's not my opinion. And it's not... It's not a view that I just personally hold, okay? Lots of people that you think are very close friends to you hold that opinion as well. And they look at you as a fucking joke. Even people that work for you as a fucking joke, Okay? So keep, so keep telling 30 guys that are awkward with women in random cities that you met a perfect 10 and that, and that you almost banged her okay, when she's a 6. Keep telling people that, you, that, that you're just destroying a game when, it, when all the evidence is to the contrary. Hire fucking models to act out stuff on infield okay, as you're trying to help guys as if these staged situations do anything more than validate this fake world you build and keep throwing fucking shit all over real true fucking masters at this shit like me okay tell everyone I, I threatened your kids thousand percent false show me any evidence to the contrary didn't even know you had kids at that point okay the low blows 
try to fucking get me arrested, try to get me thrown in jail for 10 years, steal my fucking immersion program idea. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for watching.